Welcome back everyone. It's good to see your smiling faces here again. I'm Mikey, we're in my garage, and today I want to teach you how to bleed your brakes. So in a previous video where I taught you how to do new rotors and pads in your car, I mentioned that it was a good idea to bleed your brakes at the same time. Well, here's the video showing you how to do that. When it comes to bleeding your brakes, probably one of the hardest things is actually just jacking the car up and taking the wheels off. Other than that, it's pretty simple, given the right tools. Speaking of tools, let's check out what we need. Oh, but wait, wait, wait. We gotta do this first. Tools you're gonna to need for this project. First, I've got this Motive Power Bleeder. This makes this whole process a one-person show. You don't need anybody inside the vehicle pumping the brakes or anything. All you do is fill it full of fluid, pump it up, and go. I also bought two of their bleed bottles. This is what the used brake fluid goes through when you bleed it out of the calipers. You've got this cool little lanyard to support the bottle so you don't spill anything. The brake fluid I'm gonna be putting in the car is this Moltool RBF 600. I've used this stuff in the past, I love it. You're also gonna need a wrench to open up the bleeder valves. It's an 11 millimeter. Next is gonna be the tool or tools you need to remove the filter basket that's in the top of the brake master cylinder. You can either use a little pick tool like this, a small flathead screwdriver, or what I advise, one of these trim panel removal tool sets. I'm gonna use one of these and I'm gonna use it to pry the basket out of the brake master cylinder reservoir. I advise not using a pick or a screwdriver because of the way the little basket sits inside. I don't wanna accidentally poke a hole in that little filter screen, or I don't wanna scratch up the inside of the brake master cylinder. You'll see when we get out there. Shop towels or paper towels on hand and ready to use. Gloves, in case you get any of the brake fluid on your hands. It's nasty stuff, not good for the skin. And if you're super duper extra careful, I recommend having some kind of eye protection, just in case. And of course you need a brain strap. You're also gonna need a jack to jack the car up so you can remove a wheel to access your brake calipers. You can do one corner at a time, jacking the car up, popping a wheel off, bleeding that caliper, putting the wheel back on and moving to the next. Or like me, I just put the car in four jack stands. I almost forgot, don't forget a 10 mil socket and ratchet. So first things first, grab your trusty rusty 10 mil and we have the one, two, three quarter turn fasteners to remove this panel so we can access the brake master cylinder. Then pinch this, pull the panel out of the way. Here's the reservoir for the brake master cylinder. Mine's pretty clean, but just in case, I'm gonna wipe around it, clean it of any dirt or debris. Twist off the cap. Inside, this is the little filter basket I was talking to you about. This is why I recommend using a trim tool. You know, wedging it in here without, you know, breaking the plastic of this little basket or scuffing up or destroying the inside of your master cylinder reservoir. Now you can see on this basket how there's these little detents here. This is what actually holds it in place, which is why it's difficult to pry out. Pry it on one side, hold it with your finger and wiggle the tool around to another side until you can pop it out. Aside from jacking your car up, removing this little basket is probably the most difficult thing of this whole process. Anything that touches brake fluid, I'm gonna set aside so I remember to clean it before I put it away. And since I got brake fluid on my gloves, I'm dropping the gloves and switching to new ones. It's a good idea to pressure test your power bleeder before you start this whole process. I recommend doing this part before you even jack the car up and pop any of your wheels off. Make sure you have the included rubber gasket in the cap here. Mine is already attached here and I'll tell you why. So I'm gonna untwist this so it's not too funky. Now to pressure test this, make sure the cap is tight on the top of your power bleeder. The cap is tight on the master cylinder reservoir. And I've tightened these two ends together because I've already pressure tested this before I made the video because I wanted to make sure everything worked. I could not get this to seal without putting a little bit of thread sealer tape on these fittings. You may not have this issue, but if you do, this is one possible course of action you could take. Now we just need to pump this up. I'm gonna go to 10 PSI, and I'm gonna let it sit for a minute, and I'm watching this to make sure that it doesn't lose any pressure while it's sitting here. You may already hear some hissing. If you do, 
Just listen to where the hissing's coming from and address the problem. Now this has already been sitting for about five or six minutes. It's still right at 10 PSI from where I pumped it up. It's not leaking. We can move on to the next step. I'm gonna loosen the top of the power bleeder slowly. Then I'm gonna remove the cap off the brake master cylinder so we can empty the fluid out of the reservoir. So I'm gonna grab one of my bleeder bottles, take the top off, set it somewhere close, and I'm gonna use my turkey baster to remove as much fluid from the reservoir as I can. Reason being is more moisture has been introduced to this part of the brake system, so I wanna suck this out of here instead of pulling it through the entire brake system when I do the bleed. Wipe off anything you spilled. The dark ring you see on the bottom of this is actually sediment that was in the master cylinder reservoir there. And this fluid is kind of greenish. I'm not sure what color it's supposed to be. This is pretty heinous. So now I'm just gonna put the cap back on it. Use the other side here. Close this off. Just in case that way if I knock it over, I won't spill it all over the garage floor. Since I bought this to use for the car, I'm going to use a Sharpie and I'm going to write brake fluid on the side of this just for the off chance my wife decides to come out in the garage and look for a turkey baster. So now we need to reattach the power bleeder back onto the master cylinder reservoir. I'm going to open up the top here so we can put in our fresh brake fluid. I want to note where the pickup is for this. If you look inside here, you can see the tube that runs straight down from this and this is where the fluid is picked up from the bottom. So where I set this in the engine bay here, the bottle rests where the fluid pickup is gonna be at the lowest point. With the new brake fluid, just like you'd pour a can of soda, I'm gonna tilt it over and pour it in slow so I don't introduce any bubbles into the fluid. Now, because I just put brand new brake pads and brand new rotors on this car, I shouldn't need two full bottles of this, but I'm gonna put two full bottles in here anyway because seeing how gross that old fluid was, I wanna make sure I get a good flush of the entire system. Now put the pump back on. Before I start this, I wanna make sure I have two completely empty bleed bottles. So I'm gonna empty what I sucked out of the brake master cylinder reservoir and put it in one of my empty bottles. If you did what I just did and dumped some of the nasty brake fluid into one of your empty bottles, but you still have a bottle with good brake fluid in it, Make sure you write used on the nasty one. Now all we need to do is pump this up to 15 PSI, watching the gauge here. And you can see it already starting to get sucked out. I'm gonna set this back in the engine bay. Now I'm gonna grab my 11 mil wrench and my bleeder bottles and go to the passenger rear brake caliper. When you bleed the brakes, you need to start at the caliper that's the furthest away from the brake master cylinder. On this M235i, the brake master cylinder is on the driver's side, so when we start bleeding the brakes, the furthest caliper away is on the passenger rear side. So we're gonna start with this one first. When you come back here to access the bleed valve, you just need to pop this little cap off. And if you watch my brake video, you know that this is the wear sensor for the rear pad. So I have my bleeder bottle and I've got my wrench. I'm gonna push the hose from the bleeder bottle through the wrench and then put the hose on the nipple of the bleeder valve here. And then just work your wrench back onto the bleeder valve. Now you could just set the bleeder bottle on the ground if you want, but it is still open on this one end of the cap here. So I'm gonna use the lanyard and I'm actually gonna wrap it over and hook it onto the nut that's on the end of the sway bar. So I have everything connected and ready to go, but before I open the bleeder valve, I'm just gonna go up to the hood and make sure that I'm still at 15 PSI. We're still good, it's still at 15 PSI. So I'm gonna open up the bleeder valve. So it only needs to go from, you know, closed at 12 o'clock and then open at around two and that's it. 
Everybody knows the old saying, righty tighty lefty loosey. Well, because the bleeder valve is on the opposite side of the caliper, this is just the opposite. So you're gonna notice me turning the wrench clockwise, which normally should be tightening, but like I mentioned, it's on the opposite side of the caliper, so it's actually loosening the bleeder valve. So before you start turning wrenches, just make sure you're aware of what side the bleeder valve is and turn the wrench accordingly. Because the brake system is pressurized from your power bleeder, if you open up the bleeder valves too far, Brake fluid will actually flow through the threads of the bleeder valves and drip on the back side of your brake caliper. The fluid is starting to drain slowly. Now I can tell that this is like that greenish color fluid. And after I poured the RBF 600 into the power bleeder, I can tell that that's more of a yellowish fluid. So all you have to do is watch the line here and wait for the color change. I've always thought that the brakes on this car sucked since I bought it and with the amount of bubbles that just came out, I can totally understand why now. The color of the fluid has changed to the clearish yellow, so it should just be straight RBF 600 coming out now. So all I need to do is tighten the bleeder valve back. Just snug it up until it stops. Pull the end of the, the line of the bleeder valve, secure the tubing back onto the top, and remove your lanyard. Now I need to run my brake wear sensor line back through the cap and put the cap back on. And we're ready to go to the next one. So as you can see, the PSI went from 15 down to just about 12 PSI, just from doing that passenger side rear caliper. So we need to pump it back up to 15 before we move on to the driver's side rear caliper. Now we need to do the same thing. So I'm gonna hang my bottle on the same place on the end of the sway bar end link, pop the little dust cap off the end of the bleeder valve. And again, because they're on the inside of the caliper, so you're going the opposite direction. Once again, you're looking for the color change in fluid and for it to be bubble free. Fluid color has changed, it's bubble free. I think I'm good here on this one, so I'm gonna tighten it up. Connect this back to the bottle and grab my safety strap. Now that we're on the passenger side front, the four piston caliper has a bleed valve on the outside and one on the inside. They're in the same place, top of the caliper. Just like you start with the farthest caliper on the car first, when it comes to the front calipers, you start with the farthest bleed valve. So you're gonna start with the outside bleed valve first, drain that so you see the color change, then switch to the inside valve. Wrench on tube, tube on bleeder valve. Now before I start bleeding this, of course, I'm gonna go check the PSI on my power bleeder and make sure it has enough fluid in it as well. We're still good on fluid. Righty tighty lefty loosey, for real this time. Since we are on the front of the car and we're a lot closer to the master cylinder, it shouldn't take very long for us to see a color change. There are a lot of bubbles coming out of this caliper. All right, didn't take more than a minute or so. The color of the fluid changed pretty quickly and no more bubbles. So I'm gonna tighten the bleeder valve back up. Put the cap back on. Now move on to the inside bleeder valve. All right, that didn't take more than like 10 or 15 seconds for the fluid color to change. Tighten this back up. And move over to the driver's side front. Don't forget to put the caps back on. Make sure you check the bottle for pressure and fluid. Just like the front on the other side, you need to start with the outside portion of the four piston caliper first. Color change pretty quick on that for sure because it only has a couple feet. Put the cap back on. Pop the cap off the back. I can see the pressure gauge on the power bleeder. It's still fine. That only took a few seconds, of course. Tighten this back up. And then secure the bottle. Remove the lanyard and set this aside. Make sure you put the cap back on. 
now that we're done bleeding all four calipers, we need to remove all of this stuff. So first, to relieve the pressure, you need to open up the bottle here. If you open up the cap on the brake master cylinder, brake fluid is gonna squirt everywhere. So gently loosen this. I'm gonna grab a towel and loosen the cap slowly. All right, just make sure you don't spill anything out of the cap. You shouldn't. I'm gonna wipe the top off in case I did get any drips of brake fluid. I'm gonna put the little orange cage death match back in. Make sure it clips into place. Now we're almost done. We're in the home stretch. So I'm gonna put the cap back on. I'm gonna remove all the tools and everything on my engine bay. I'm gonna leave this panel off for now. I'm gonna close the hood. I'm gonna put all the wheels back on the car, take it off the jack stands, put it back on level ground. Then I'm gonna get in the car and I'm gonna pump the brake pedal until it's firm. Then I'm gonna pop the hood again, come back in here, and I need to check the fluid level in the brake master cylinder reservoir. Even though I have good lighting in my garage, you're probably just like me and you can't tell at all where the fluid level is in this reservoir. Super pro tip here is get a flashlight and if you shine it on the top here, you can actually see where the level of fluid is in the reservoir. I'm a little bit below the max, which is just fine. So I do still have, I'd say probably about that much unused brand new brake fluid, but this isn't gonna seal completely to stop air and moisture from getting in this cap, which is a major factor in the reason why I'm not keeping this. Brake fluid is hydroscopic, meaning it absorbs moisture. So it's gonna pull as much moisture as it can through the little lid here, and it's going to absorb water. So there's no point in saving this. So one of the last things I need to do is just transfer this fluid to you know one of these bottles, because it's got a good lid, take it to an auto parts store for recycling. Now we need to put this panel back on, so grab the panel and your trusty rusty 10 mil socket. Now remember, quarter turn fasteners. And if you need to, run the weather stripping back over. Before you go tearing down the street with your fresh brake fluid, make sure after you start the car, pump the brakes a few times, get some pedal pressure before you actually put it in gear and take off. See how simple that was? Like I said, it's just a matter of having the right tools. Like always, I'll put a few links in the description below of some of the products that I used. If you ever wanna know what I'm working on next, check out my Instagram, which is also in the description below. I have a few performance upgrades scheduled for the car, and it might have something to do with those boxes over there from Turner Motorsports. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, you're missing out on life. I guess that covers everything. Cool? Later.